Hello everyone, this is Trevor and thank you for coming to my channel, Pioneer Spirit. I just want to say thank you to everyone who likes, subscribes, hits the bell notification, comments, watches my videos right till the very end because usually towards the end is where I like to give my solutions to the uh, what grinds my gears. So watch the videos right till the very end and share the videos your support is greatly appreciated, and I thank you very much. Okay, so today is my, it's my th uh, th third month for my carnivore diet review. And I like to kind of, you know, break it up into like the, the good, the bad, the ugly of it. Um, so far, not too much bad and ugly, but, uh, you know, there, there's always things that um, you know, I can approve upon. And uh, yeah, so I want to share them with you. So I'm going to start off. I, I got my notes here. Try to write down everything I can. Um, and if I think of something else during this video, I certainly will add it. So, so the good. Um, okay, so it's been three months and I'm down two belt sizes. Okay. Um, I kind of wish after three months I'd be down a bit more. But uh, maybe another belt size, but, you know, down two belt sizes, and that's good. And I can tell you, I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm sure everyone does this, but yeah, before I get into the shower, I kind of look at myself, you know, front, side, and as much on the back as I can, to, just to see, am I, am I making any improvements on my physical appearance? I think I am. I can tell you right now, I'm not, I, I don't have the beach bod yet to stand up here and, and, uh, you know, rip my shirt off like Hulk Hogan. And, um, uh, I don't quite, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe in, you know, come up the summer of 2024, maybe I can do that right now. No, uh, only because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like five foot nine. And when I started this carnivore diet, uh, you know, three months ago, I was 224 pounds, which is way too heavy, way too heavy for my height. Um, Apparently, my ideal weight for my height uh, is 165 pounds, um, which I weighed a few times in high school. So, you know, it'd be great to get down to um, obviously somewhere where, yeah, I, I, I've got the beach bod, uh, you know, don't really care for the dad bod too much. So, you know, and that's let's. So I'm going to tell you the the goods that's going on, but I guess I'll just a bit more information. If you haven't watched the previous videos, I started this diet uh, this summer. My daughter, she turned 10 and in August, and I'm going to turn 51 in about a week from now. So, you know, there's like a, you know, 40 plus year age difference between us and, um, I just start, you know, I've, I look at my daughter and I think, you know, I'm, I'm at the time she turned 10, I'm 50, almost 51. I want to be around as long as I can for my daughter. Okay. Um, now if the universe decides to take me as I'm making this video, I, whatever, there's nothing I can do about it. Right. It just shit happens. But if I can help through perhaps diet and, and making myself as healthy as possible, then yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And I just, I, I just, again, on her 10th birthday was in August, mid August. And I look and go, you know what? I've had enough cake in my life. I've had enough sourdough bread and chips and, um, I'm never big on fruits and vegetables anyways. It's not in the diet, but I, I don't poo poo on fruits and vegetables so much, but definitely I've had, I've had my share of bread and, and, um, you know, butter tarts and cake and ice cream and chips and nachos. I've had all that. So I just thought I gotta, I want to lose weight. Okay. I want to lose weight. I want to be as healthy as I can. Um, I want to look good and I want to feel good. Okay. I want to be around as long as I can. Um, especially for my daughter because I am an older dad. I mean, uh, most guys, my age, my friends who I went to high school with, I mean, you know, at 50 years old, um, I've got friends who are grandparents um, a lot of my friends have kids that are in high school or who have graduated high school in college. You get the point, right? Being 50 years old with a 10 year old daughter, it's, um, it's a little unusual, not, not too unusual, but it just, what it does is it, you know, I, I'm not as, uh, healthy as I was obviously 25 years ago. Um, but you know, Hey, so I thought I'm going to change. I'm going to change. 
um, for myself, for other people, for, especially for my daughter. I want to look and feel good. And just that's it. I've, and again, I'm like, I, I haven't in the three months had any major cravings for cake and butter tarts and all the things I used to love to eat. Sourdough breads and pastas. I just it's just kind of who I am. Once I decide something, I go ahead and do it. And that's it. It's just it's done and um, been loving the carnivore diet since I started three months ago. So, okay, so that being said, yeah, in the three months, I'm down two belt sizes. I can look in the mirror before I get in the shower, and I feel, I, I, I feel like I've, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm looking better, uh, but still, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> not going to do like a beach bod reveal video. It's, you know, may, maybe next summer. Maybe I got probably going to need another six months or so for that. Um, so, you know, like um, I hear, I watch a lot of videos where people say their eye floaters have um, gone away even after a few months. And for me, I've had eye floaters. So I have glasses. My my prescription has never changed. It's, um, I just have, what's that, astigmatism? Like, a, like if I look at the moon at night, it kind of has a bit of a, um, there's kind of a, a second moon behind it, not just, a, just a little piece of it. And I put glasses on and it turns the moon into just one moon. I don't see it. So I've always had that. So my glass prescriptions, it's very weak. Um, it's definitely for distance. Um, now if I, you know, if I stepped on my glasses right now and broke them, I could get in my car and drive. Like I, I can still, I can still function without my glasses, but I do prefer to have them on just makes movies a whole lot better and driving a whole lot better. And, you know, looking up at the stars and moon at night, um, there's not kind of that slight double vision in there, but with the carnivore diet, I've heard people say, oh, their eye floaters have gone away and I have eye floaters and have they gone away? Uh, no, they've decreased, I think slightly. Like I used to just like I could sit here like I am now and I would just look around and I could see them floating in my eyes. I don't see it um, as much, but if I focus on it, I can see some eye floaters. So I don't know. Is that a, it, it's good. I think it's gone down, but um, I don't know. I guess you could put that in the bad and the ugly part, too. It's right on the borderline there. It's like it's kind of gotten better, but it's not the, the improvements that I see some people talking about. Uh, okay. So, so eyes, yeah, I think there's an improvement, but you know, hopefully it's going to take a bit longer and I think it's going to take me a bit longer too, because I'm going to get into further in the video of, uh, my diet and, and exactly what I'm eating. So, um, which is why my results aren't as, um, strong as some other results. They're good, but they could be better, but, uh, I'll get to further that what I'm eating in my, my video. So urination urination i had a problem with urinating at night i mean god i'd be up <clears throat> i mean for for 20 years i've been up you know sometimes i have a good night where i'm not um urinating too much but um yeah with the, the carnivore diet i find myself i like i get up uh, once for sure you know twice um, sometimes three times, but that just depends on how late I've ate and how much I've drank before I went to bed. But typically now I'm like, wow, I've noticed that my, uh, nighttime urination has, you know, it's once like I can go to bed at, uh, typically I go to bed, you know, 11 o'clock and I'm up, uh, no later than 8 AM the next day. Um, so it's kind of that time frame Now there's nights where, most nights now, in the last three months, I'll get up at like 4 a.m. Um, sometimes I'll get up at 2. Again, it's just if I, the more I drink in the evening, the more I'm going to get up. Um, so I've had to, which I'm going to work into my water consumption further in the video here too. But um, yeah, I just even if I do have a bit more water in the evening, I notice that I, I am cutting out at least the 2 a.m urination which is nice uh some nights i've gone till 6 a.m um we have a a dog she's a large dog and she's up she'll wake me up usually 5 or 6 a.m and some nights i've gone till then because that's when she likes to eat her first meal of the day and and she likes to go out and do her business in the backyard so i can go until 5 a.m before i have to get up and that's not to say every night it's not 
it's not like, oh, yeah, I'm in bed at 11 and I don't have to go and urinate until the dog wakes me up. No, some, I'm still getting up, but it's not as much. So it is getting better. Um, well, I guess I'll talk about the water consumption then because obviously urination and water. What I've researched is that whether whatever diet you're on, actually, but because I have been on the carnivore, I'm, I'm more focusing on you know, just hearing about the nighttime urination and, um, I, you know, you should be drinking, I should be drinking my water, um, most of my water, 10 hours from the time you get up. So most of the days I'm up, I'm, you know, uh, 7 8, 8 a.m. Um, so, you know, I guess by six o'clock at night, most of my water should be consumed and I'm, I'm kind that's where the bad and ugly in this is. I do my very best to make sure by like 6, 7 p.m. I've had most of my water. And then after that, and eating too. I like to have all my eating done by like 7 p.m. Um, some nights I can't if we have some other things that need to that need to get done, um, you know, later in the afternoon, early evening. Then, yeah, I like last night I ate uh, and I had some ground beef at... Um, like 8 30 at night so i had um geez almost a liter of water with that after so yeah i was up a bit more last night with the urination but i'm trying my hardest to make sure i'm getting my water consumption um within the 10 hours after i wake up and then from there you know i mean I'll, like i need something to drink in the evening i'm not going to deny myself i'm thirsty i just really try to, to to make sure it's all in so i'm not as thirsty in the evening so I think if I can, I, I, this is where the bad and ugly is with the water. I need to consciously drink more water in the daytime. Um, as I'm going to take a sip right now here. Oh, I need to, uh, consciously drink more water. Yeah. Within the 10, first 10 hours of being awake. But, uh, you know, if I need something to drink after that, I'm not going to deny myself, but so my urination at night, it has improved, uh, it probably cut out at least one once a night from my usual, like th sometimes like three times getting up, you know, I'll get up uh, once or twice now, um, sometimes three, like last night was a little more because I just drank so much water when I came in because um, I was hungry and I couldn't eat at um, six o'clock just from other appointments that we had to go and do so. So, yeah, so kind of bad and ugly. I got to get the obviously good to get to get more water drank. But the bad and ugly part is I'm not drinking most of my water 10 hours after. So I'm going to have to improve on that. So, OK, next thing. Uh, yeah, the beautiful topic of bowel movements. Oh, yes. Everyone likes to, you know, <laughs> it, I know people are maybe uncomfortable about, about it, but I want to hear about it. So. My bowel movements with the carnivore diet on a good day, I will have two bowel movements and, you know, that's a good day. Now, my pre carnivore diet, which was kind of like everything, you know, just whatever, eat anything. I'd go at least three times a day and, you know, some of my bowel movements, I sit there and like I have always been the kind of guy I go to the bathroom I want to get in and out as quick as I can. I don't want to sit there and, and just, you know, uh, daydream and stuff. No, I want to do what I got to do. But sometimes on the pre-carnivore diet, I, I could be in there for 10 minutes and go, oh, I've gone. I can't get anything else to come out, but I still feel like I have to go. Sometimes I'd have that. Um, and I mean, quite often, uh, like every other day or at least, you know, every third day, I'd have a like a just a bowel movement pre-carnivore bowel movement it would be like uh, my eyes are open like saucers and i'm like oh my god get me to a bathroom okay that's just you know it's the reality of my bowel movements it was you know three times a day and sometimes never feeling like like i would get up after 10 minutes i go like i just i didn't feel like i evacuated all that as much as i should have and um yeah so i mean you know through all throughout the day and it's not like i'm running to the bathroom all day but it's just, yeah, like I could go and then, you know, if I was going on a road trip or at work or something. Yeah, I mean, okay, I could function, but 
you know, it was just it's just too much, right? I don't want to go that many times a day, and I don't want to have like that. Oh Lord, get me to the bathroom right now! I've got two minutes, or there's gonna be an apple pie in my pants, sort of thing, right? Like that's what I had pre carnivore. So the bowel movements with the carnivore have improved. Um, I'm still having some challenges. Uh, be honest, like the last couple days, I've probably gone about four times in the day, just loose bowel movements um that's fine most of the time in the past three months I've, I've managed to get it down to two and i feel great it's like i have a bowel movement and i feel evacuated and it's like man i'm good for four or five hours at least right um so like two a day but yeah this week i've been kind of um i don't know maybe a touch of a cold or something but and again too like you know, I, I can't, you can't just, you know, day one, switch it off of uh, one diet to the other and just, oh, okay, next day I'm, I'm a hundred percent better now. No, I mean, again, I'm almost 51. So I've had this many years of, of eating just whatever. And all of a sudden now I've changed. So my body is adapting. It's adapting. So yes, some days it has improved. The bowel movements improved. I would say two good bowel movements a day for, you know, in the last three months, it's good. I've been cutting down on my bowel movements. But yes, in the last few days, I've had some some rough patches there with the bowel movements. But, you know, I just, hey, it's it's. Um, I know that uh, most of the time here now, my bowel movements have been regulating themselves in a, in a fantastic way. And I do chalk that up to, hey, I have cut out grains uh, and... Um, grains treats and junk food treats you know the sweets the, the ice cream and the pies and, and butter tarts and muffins and all that and you know the junk food like you know the chips and doritos and nachos and all that cutting that stuff out has is completely eliminated that 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 uh really bad bowel movement that i i could get at least you know i have three a day and that was contributing contributing to those you know more than Yes, Christ, sometimes I'd have more than three bowel movements a day. It was just awful. So to get rid of that um, has helped. Um, now, fruits and vegetables, I, I'm not incorporating that in this, obviously, carnivore diet. Um, I liked fruits and vegetables, some of them, not all of them. was never a big fruit and vegetable eater. But, um, yeah, even at that, I could eat, uh, you know, a couple apples or a bowl of blueberries. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, it's going to make... My bowel movement's quite sudden and explosive, right? So um, cutting that out, I just, I feel better. I just, I, I knowing that, look, my days are getting better. I've had a few rough days in the last couple of days with kind of a explosive sudden bowel movement. But for the most part, yeah, I noticed that, yeah, on the carnivore diet, bowel movements are improving uh, and I feel better. I just, I take a bowel movement. And it's like, wow, man, I'm good to go. I am good to go. And that's, that's an improvement. So that's that's really good. But the bad and ugly part, um, yeah, I've had a couple days where kind of sudden explosive bowel movement. But I'm I I am getting better. So I'm chalking it up to yeah, my body's just adjusting to it. Again, I've you know, I'm I'm gonna be fifty one in a few weeks here and I just started this diet three months ago. So my body's like, Whoa, major adjustment here. Okay, uh, another thing here I wrote down. I noticed that some people say their gums improved. Like Jordan Peterson has said, you know, he's had he had rough gums, um, his uh, dental hygiene and whatnot. Like he just had problems with it, and, and his gums have improved. But that took some time. Um, I keep an eye on. I've got some receding gums and whatnot um, in some of my some areas of my mouth there and my teeth mainly up top on the right uh, receding gums. I've noticed a slight improvement. So, uh, and they're not as sore. Um, so yeah, I would say gums are improving, but I mean, again, that's, man, I've completely cut out basically sugar and, and most of my carbs are gone. Like carbs and sugar are just non-existent now in my diet. So I'm chalking that up to, uh, you know, my gums are improving, right? They're not being loaded up with sugar and carbs. Uh, okay, so, so the, yeah, gums are improving, but it's, you know, it's not like super good, but it's not on the bad or ugly um, chart. It is, I, I would say slight improvement, so hopefully the, um, they do keep improving. But again, I'll get to why my, my improving on the carnivore diet isn't as rapid as someone like Jordan Peterson 
who uh, completely one day just said, that's it. It was like uh, red meat for him. It's tomahawk steaks, uh, puts a bit of salt on it and water. And, you know, his results were in seven months, he lost 50 pounds. He went from 212 pounds to 162. And now six years later on the carnivore diet, he's 165 pounds. So his body is adjusted. That's where his body feels the most comfortable. And, and, um, you know, he says he's six foot two. So at 165 pounds, six foot two, I I think that's a, a little lean, but but for someone like myself at, at five foot nine, I'm thinking 165. That's that'd be more that would be more suited to me. But yeah, he's fine. He's fine. That's where his body is. Said, hey, that's great. So he got really good results. Um, he might get them quicker than I am because I am not just sticking to just the red meat with salt and water. But um, I'll, I'll get up further into that um, a bit more into the video here. Uh, so food cost and prep time. I was worried about, um, food cost, not so much prep time when I started this, but food cost. Oh my God, I'm going to, you know, break the bank. Well, I really haven't. I really haven't. And, and, and that's difficult because, you know, it's, um, as I make this video, it's mid November, 2023. And I'm sure just like 90% of the other people on this earth, you know, trying to pay for gas and groceries right now, it's not a pretty thing. So like I've been able to, like I go to usually Walmart is my main go-to place to buy my food and I just shop around. I look at the expiry dates on meat and I go, okay, this is going to expire on the 10th of this month or the 12th. So I try to go in the day before or the day of, and I try to get the meats that I know they're going to put on sale and that's fine. In fact, um, a month ago I bought nine trays of medium ground beef which are normally $16 for the one, about 1 1.3 kilograms worth of <clears throat> the medium ground beef. I got it for eight bucks. So I bought like nine trays and I'm like, that's fine. I put them all in my freezer. You know, they're going to expire the next day or within a couple days. That's fine. Just bring it home and put it in your freezer. So I have been fortunate enough and bacon right now uh, for a 375 gram pack of bacon. I mean, it's like six, seven bucks. But every once in a while, my Walmart will put it on for two seventy seven or two ninety seven. So I buy like fifty packs of bacon, right? <clears throat> Why not buy in bulk? Buy the your fa- my favorite products. <clears throat> whether whatever you're vegan or general's diet, anyways, everyone should be doing this. When you find your the food products that you enjoy right now, buy it in bulk. So yeah, I'm buying ground beef in bulk. Uh, bacon, um, steaks, chicken, chicken, something I haven't been able to afford to buy for the last year. I guess I could, but I mean, I just, I don't really want to spend the money on chicken that much, but I found, um, a couple weeks ago, uh, chicken on sale at Walmart. It was, uh, you know, antibiotic free and it was, um, maple leaf or prime. It was a good, it was a good, uh, brand name of chicken and it was on for $7 for 800 grams. And right now it's like 12 bucks for, for 800 grams of chicken. <clears throat> like it's a ridiculous, it's ridiculously priced for a, you know, so I went and found these trays of chicken, 800 grams of chicken for seven bucks. So I bought, oh my goodness. I bought, f- uh, four trays that were, uh, 1600 grams each. So I bought them. That's I, I took all there was four trays in the end compartment at the Walmart. Check those end compartments, you know, where they have the frozen food. And then on either end, they have the um, little compartments. That's where Walmart likes to put their reduced meat. Now, like I said, I found four trays that were one point six kilograms each. And it was uh, they were 14 bucks. So I bought four of them. <laughs> OK. Um, my daughter loves chicken. We love chicken in our home here, so it's good. I like chicken too. Um, now chicken is an, it isn't on the bottom tier of the carnivore diet. It is on there. So what I do to supplement to get a bit more fat, I just, I have some cheese with it. So, um, that's where the, I I am on the carnivore. Yes, but I do, I have incorporated dairy into my diet. So, so yeah, so food cost, I'm not, I'm not, um, it's not shocking me too much. And prep time, prep time is pretty easy. I mean, you know, to cook lean ground beef, 10 minutes, as long as it's not frozen. 
Um, that's the key to it, too. Make sure that when you're on the carnivore diet, you got to plan ahead. Like um, this morning, I took out a frozen tray, one of those trays I bought on sale of the medium ground beef. Um, I took it out <coughs> this morning and just put it in the fridge. Uh, might not be ready for tonight, but tomorrow it'll be fine. So um, I'm always taking out frozen trays of food. And, uh, and, and you hear me saying medium ground beef. I... I, prefer, I like medium ground beef over lean. Now, I will buy the lean if it's on for a good sale. But right now for, like Walmart puts out their packages of ground beef. They're about 1.3 kilograms each. And um, yeah, right now medium ground beef is about 16 bucks for a tray. 1.3 kilograms as where lean ground is about 19 bucks. So just for the price alone, if I had to buy it on regular price right now, I would I would go for medium ground. I just I prefer the medium ground. It's it, I find it's good. It's tasty. It works. Um, if lean grounds on sale, I'd buy it too. So and I have I've found some um, some good sales on it. So you just got to shop around a bit. Um, so the yeah the cost ha did, hasn't blown me away. Um, and prep time is as long as you take your food out, um, you're fine. So the next component of my carnivore diet is dairy. And I did start off and I thought, I, I'm still going to eat dairy, like cheese, butter. Um, I, ha I started off with milk. Now milk, I quit drinking mid-October. Um, just found the carb and sugar count too high. And I thought, ah, it's fine. I just replace it with some water, which I'm trying to increase. But now, of course, as I talk talked earlier, it's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. But I just, I'm going to keep increasing the water. So... Yeah, milk, just too too expensive. Um, $7 for four liters, or I suppose for American peeps, uh, one gallon, it's uh, $7. It's just too much. I thought, nah, I'll just take that and, and spend it elsewhere, invest it elsewhere. So gave up on milk, just mainly because the carb and sugar count's too high and the price is too high. Um, now, butter, I love butter. I want to eat as much butter as I can, but right now for a pound of butter in Canada... You're talking seven dollars and twenty eight cents for your name brand, about six fifty for no name brand butter. Uh, that's just way too much, even six fifty. So, you know, when it comes on sale right now, which is five dollars a pound, I'll buy as much as I can um, if it's on for even less than five. But that seems to be the sale price, which is unfortunate because just a couple of years ago, butter was you know a couple bucks a pound, but of course. Everything that's happened in the since 2020 has uh, messed up the economy. So, yeah, the price of butter, I, I'm still eating that. Um, cheese, probably still going through 400 gram um, blocks per week. Uh, some days I don't eat it. Some days I just, yeah, I'll have a ton of cheese. Um, what else for the dairy? Uh, yogurt. I, I, okay, so I have the highest fat content of yogurt that I can find, vanilla yogurt, but I don't eat too much. Maybe every three days I'll have a couple scoops of yogurt just because, again, the, the carb and sugar count in the yogurt's too high, but um, I do find it is is kind of a secondary, the back burner um, to the carnivore diet is dairy, so I don't want to overload on it. Again, I but yeah, I just, I do have a couple scoops and that's it. Not a bowl, big bowl, but just a couple scoops. Um, sour cream. I get that 18% mahogenized fat. It's, it's freaking thick. I mean, it's like a brick. Okay. That kind of sour cream. Uh, sometimes I'll put a little scoop on with my bacon or my ground beef or chicken. I just want to flavor it up a little bit. So I'll have a bit of sour cream, but I'm going to say now into my third month here, the dairy portion of my diet is it's reduced again with not drinking milk. Um, <clears throat> oh, coffee cream. OK, so I do have coffee cream. I do have two cups of coffee in the morning. I haven't been able to give that up. Um, and I'm just I don't know if I ever want to. I enjoy coffee. My morning time is my time to. That's what I'm doing, my work research. And uh, since I am a one-man show here, <clears throat> yeah, that's the mornings are, are spent on my, um, my work time, my research time to make the videos. So, yeah, I do enjoy a couple cups of coffee, um, whether watching or reading um, videos and articles and whatnot. So, yeah, I do have coffee. So I put coffee cream in there. So I do have cream. 
Again, it's a couple carbs per cup of coffee, and I don't think that's too bad. So uh, maybe one day I'll give up the coffee, but for right now, no, not giving that up. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers the dairy end of that. Um, so yeah, I, um, I guess I'm going to stop. Well, I had a, <clears throat> this kind of now the bad and ugly part of it. Um, I listed first here the drinking water. I did. I already talked about that. I'm not drinking enough water. I need to increase that definitely um, for the first 10 hours after I wake up. Uh, another part of why I'm not losing, <clears throat> I guess, more weight. And I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to tell you more about my diet towards the end as to why I'm not losing as much weight. But um, right now, too, lack of exercise. Um, I, I love to swim and I swim like even as chunky as I am with the old dad bod, I don't care. I go swimming. Uh, I go swimming every day uh, in the summertime. Like we have a, a, a public pool here. It's an outdoor one. I love going there. I swim, um, exercise in there. Uh, so I'm not doing that right now. It's obviously I, I'm in Canada. So, and being mid November, we, we, there's no out you don't do outdoor pools this time of year and the closest indoor pool to me is an hour away so I, I just i don't swim um i just i don't exercise enough i don't exercise enough i do have an ab slide in here it's actually right in front of me which is about where it is most of the time but when i do get down i'll do like 50 ab slides so i'm trying to increase my exercise because i know that's going to help me obviously it's going to help with the muscle toning and whatnot so i do need to increase the exercise um which kind of fits into the time i started carnivore diet most of my results did happen in august for the weight reduction and whatnot um, because I was swimming, I'm like, I'm at the pool, like every day, my, you know, I, um, family and I will be there like three, four hours every afternoon, swimming, getting sunshine, uh, just having a great time in the pool. So uh, it's not that, um, I started this at a bad time because now that we're getting into winter, um, I am less active, but I mean, there is no bad time to start the carnivore diet. Start it. It's like that um, saying, when's the best time to plant a tree? 10 years ago. When's the next best time? Today. Okay. And you can apply that to so many things in life, like the carnivore diet. When's the best time? Start it today. It could be in the winter and being that my situation in Canada <clears throat> and not having um, my favorite uh, exercise, like being in the pool. I just like. Uh, there's no indoor pool here, so I can't do it. Uh, but that's that's fine. Start it now. And I, I, got, I know I recognize my ab slide. I got to do it, perhaps. Uh, I don't know about weightlifting anymore. I was big into that, you know, as a teenager in my 20s. Not so much anymore. I want to do um, like just swimming in the pool. So I recognize, yeah, um, exercise should be incorporated more with this diet. It's going to help me tone more, but, um, that's fine. I'm not going to stop the carnivore. That's, you know, like I say, the best time to start it's today. It, don't worry about what time of year, but I was kind of thinking that maybe if I had started this in like March or April, then by the time the pools open in June, start exercising more. And then I think that the summer would have really shown a lot of <clears throat> better results for myself. Um, so, so, you know, maybe by next summer again, you know, I'll be down and uh, quite a bit. I hope I'm hoping be down quite a bit um, in the, the chub on my belly and, uh, you know, and then start swimming again and boom, it, you know, it'll really skyrocket. So I, I'm going to stay positive and keep do keep rolling on here and just just try to do a bit more exercise. OK, so. Ah. Uh, yeah, just I'm kind of going over the notes here. Um, so, yeah, I want to. So I, I had wrote on to that after that. You know, I know that being in my situation, um, you know, the wintertime, less active and whatnot. Um, don't give up. Don't give up if the results aren't uh, like if you're trying to if you're on it, you're like me three, three months, you're in your fourth month now and your results aren't good. Don't don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just keep going. Um, you know, cause you'll go over videos on YouTube of people that, uh, they're like, you know, Hey, I lost, you know, they're losing like 10 pounds a month <clears throat> and they're just rocketing on it. Uh, Jordan Peterson, like he was like, man, that's it. 
hardcore, hardcore carnivore, you know, just um, eating the red meat, a bit of salt and water. You know, these these videos that people will make, the, their results are like you know, up to 10 pounds a month. Mine hasn't been like that. I In three months, um, I, I, I might be down 15 pounds, 12 pounds or so, but um, only because uh, it's it's my diet and, and I will talk more about that in just a second, but, but just don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Just keep going. If your results aren't like you go on YouTube and you're like, Oh man, these, some of these people are losing 10 pounds a month and they're just looking great. Um, you, you can get there. Uh, you, you know, it's uh, just depending on your budget and whatnot too, right? Like some people like Jordan Peterson, he eats a tomahawk steak. You know, uh, from what I've researched, some of those steaks can be 200 bucks. I, I can't afford a tomahawk steak. I can't afford um, a T-bone steak. I, you know, I, I try to get like I try when I get my steaks, they're all on sale. OK, I'm not going and buying steaks at full prices right now. Why? Most of the meat I buy, again, is on sale. Um so yeah, I mean, just, just keep going, just keep going. I am losing. It's a little slower. I don't know if I'm going to lose uh, 50 pounds in six months sort of thing, but you know, Hey, maybe I will. Uh, um, I could do it if I changed up what I ate just slightly. Um, because so now, yeah, let's get into the diet part. What do I, what am I eating? I know that the best ultimate carnivore diet, that's going to be red meat, a bit of salt and water. Now, I think the water part, um, speaking of water, another sip here. Yeah, um, I'm eating as much red meat as I can in the form of beef, like cow, okay? And your, uh, you know, your ruminant animals, uh, your ungulates, you know, those are the best red meats you can eat. And I love elk. I've had elk and bison before, and it's delicious, absolutely delicious. But the um, the current place where I'm living in Canada right now, as as opposed to the previous, I can't get elk and bison as uh, cheaply as I could when I lived in like Western Canada. <clears throat> I, you know, I, I just go to the store and pick up some bison and elk and um, it was good price and it's a beautiful meat. Um, I would eat more of it again if I if I had the money. But again, I got to I got to do the carnivore diet to my budget and everybody do the carnivore diet to your budget. Get the meats that you can afford. So, yeah, eating as much um, ground beef as I can, because ground beef um is cheaper medium ground beef is the cheapest red meat i can find and then from there you know if i find steaks on sale I'll do it um if i could find elk and bison i would it's absolutely it's just mm, it's delicious it's delicious absolutely beautiful and i would love to and i've had deer meat before um you know i love it uh, i love eating deer that's a good meat as well uh, i've never had um moose but i'd like to try moose in fact i'd like to try black bear um everyone who's you know well videos i've watched of people who eat black bear it's just it's just amazing um especially you know they've after a whole summer of black bear grazing on fish and berries man they're the just the, the, the way the meat's cooked up it just looks very tender and juicy so if i can eat more of the red meat i would but um again it just it just goes to budget and whatnot i can afford so I, and I, I love pork products. So a lot of my diet right now in three months has been pork. Uh, pork chops, love them. Uh, bacon, um, pork loin, and sausages. So I'm, I'm eating a lot of that. Now there are the carb content. That's the thing. The carb content in the pork is, is higher than it would be in the red meats. So... But still, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. Um, again, I, I did buy chicken. Uh, two weeks ago so eating more of that but trying to put a bit more cheese on it to, to compensate for the lack of fat in there the saturated fat because that's where i want to get my energy from um i know like look if i if i could if <laughs> somehow came into some money um yeah i would eat t-bone steaks and filet mignon and and um ribeyes you know that have been panda massaged you know those nice ribeye steaks i'd eat them every day I'd eat them every day and I know that, yeah, my results would be better, but just, 
it just I, I know my results. I know I look and go, okay, don't try to to go and compare yourself to someone who's just eating the red meat, who can afford to do it. Okay, like I like I say, I I, I, I buy the as much as I can. I have to what my budget is. Um, try to eat as much red meat as I can. Um, I'd actually like to to eat more salmon as well. I love a, like a grilled salmon, but salmon just even on sale right now. <clears throat> Even salmon on sale right now is just still ridiculously priced. So, you know, I have tuna, but um, eating tuna from dry from a can, I can do it, but it's not, it's not great. Um, but I, I can do it. So yeah, tuna. <clears throat> and again, like you look at the carnivore food pyramid on the bottom, it's like red meats. You know, your steaks, your elk, bison, moose, deer. It's a lot of that. And and again, I'm trying to eat as much. Much as that as I can, I I, I just I haven't come across any elk or, or moose or bison or deer. Probably you know just in the area I live in now, and I'm the price of it's going to be, <clears throat> just I know it's going to be too much. So do what I can with the red meat, and then again you know I am eating a lot of pork, um, you know, some tuna, just you know just a dry can of tuna I can eat that, but mm, it's not the greatest. But uh, some chicken, so. So that part of it. Now, the dairy part, um, again, is it's it has gone down, um, especially since um, like a cutout milk from the diet. And then um, actually adding a bit more salt to my food now, flavor it up a bit. And uh, yeah, yeah. So that's where my diet's at. So, you know, just eating as much as I can. Uh, well, eating as much as I can for for meat products. Um, I'd like to eat more red meat, but it just it just comes down to pricing. So I got to eat. Um, just got to stick the old regular cow red meat. But if you know if you've never had elk <clears throat> or bison, oh, I totally recommend that. Especially if you're a carnivore and you do like eating meat, um, really go and try that. It's a beautiful meat, especially the elk. Um, I made, I used to make uh, bison, I would make it in the crock pot, and just like a roast, and it's just delicious, it's absolutely delicious, and a barbecued elk steak, oh, with goat cheese, no, raspberry goat cheese, I don't know if I'd have the raspberry goat cheese, but goat cheese on an elk steak, uh, it's just fantastic, I just, I'm not even going to go bother trying to find it, because right now, I mean, it's November 2023, and like I say, most people watching this uh, video would be like, "Look, yeah, I know the price prices at the the you know gas station and grocery stores are just you know pretty tough. So you got to make do with what you got in your budget. Um, just buy the meats that you can afford. Continually go like if you have somewhere you know close and local like like I do with the Walmart. Just you know go a few times a week and and look at the expiry dates on the meat. Okay, and try to go. Okay, if it expires on the fifteenth. You know, try to go the a few days before because, um, you know, the I don't know. I, I would hope they don't change the expiry dates if it's on expires on the 15th. I hope they don't come redo it and ex now move it up to like the, <coughs> the 20th or something like that. But hopefully not. But um, trying to I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, the day before the expiry date that they want to put them out. So I've had some 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 good deals on meat. Um yeah, I just know that, look, if I could just do strictly the red meats, uh, yeah, my, my progress would be better, but it's still good. I'm still good. I'm still, like, I'm eating the meats that um, that are on sale, that I like to eat, and it's uh, good. Oh, and another thing, too, with bacon, too. Bacon's like a, like a, like a one-two punch, man. It's, it's like a good left-right punch because it's just you get the bacon and i keep the grease now i pour off the first kind of first layer of grease when it's first cooking but when you get down to that nice yellow gold grease i've been keeping it put it in mason jars um it'll you know you, you don't have to necessarily be quick about it and put it in the fridge it can sit out a little bit um in your kitchen you know but you can put it in the fridge that's all i do i think six months i think it can get out of that so it's a double whammy bacon grease um a couple times i have just taken a spoonful of it it's fine i like it uh can cook with it especially because of the price of butter butter being just yeah again it's like 
over seven bucks for a pound of butter here in Canada. So keep your bacon grease, people. That's another trick of the trade here for the carnivore diet. Um, if you like bacon, keep the grease. So I don't know, really know much more to say here. That's like geez, three pages of information I'm just kind of flipping through here that I've uh, wrote down. I, I think I've gone through quite a bit here. Um, yeah, so I think that covers my three-month so far review of the carnivore diet. If you have any comments about it, um, do it. Just comment below and tell me about your experience. Um, post your channel, and I want to know your channel. I try to go through all the <coughs> carnivore uh, diet channels here on YouTube and Rumble and BitChute and Odyssey and all the other ones that I'm on. You can find Pioneer Spirit, yeah, on YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey. Um, go and look there. Not so much on Odyssey, but yeah, YouTube, BitChute, and Rumble. Um, I, I try to find all the carnivore diets. So if, if you're doing this and you want to, you know, <clears throat> let's be supportive of each other and post your channel here and let uh, let me come to it and I'll subscribe. I'll help you out. And yeah, so if you could, please, I thank everyone who's watched this video right till the very end. I mean, I'm going up to 50 minutes here. Um, but uh, yeah, I thank everyone who's liked and supported my channel. And just this is a fantastic journey. And I'm glad everyone, you know, you've stuck out with me from the beginning here. And you're you're on my journey um, to see where this goes. So that's the carnivore journey. And of course, everything else I post here on YouTube. This is a no holds barred freedom of speech channel. So, uh, you know, I, I, it's not just carnivore. It is, you know, I report on uh, politics, news, and everything that's, you know, local, regional, national, and global. So that's where it's at. Okay, I thank everyone here, and I uh, hope everyone's having a good day, and bye-bye.